Module 8 is a very lengthy module reviewing the many expressions and functions available for the different data types in XSLT 1 and 2. We'll review the basic data types supported by XSLT 2. We'll look at how we can reflect cultural practices for the formatting of number values, how to use regular expressions to powerfully analyze patterns found in strings, and how to identify important nodes that are key to our transformation. We'll cover those functions related to Boolean and number values, the many functions used for string values, and functions for sequences of values. There are a lot of functions for working with date and time values, including durations. There are functions for node set values and for values that are qualified names, which are a first class data type in XSLT2. And finally, functions that help us format URI strings, access XML and non XML documents, access the key nodes we've identified, and work with unparsed entity declarations. The last instructional node addresses sorting and grouping. We'll look separately at the task of arranging our resulting information in sorted order and the task of arranging our information in groups. Specifically, we'll examine the algorithms of doing grouping in different ways, with different benefits, in XSLT1 and how these have all been generalized and enhanced in XSLT2. These are the last of the instructions and functions defined by XSLT 1 and 2, and by the end of this module, we will have covered every element, every attribute, and every function of both versions of both specifications. The first of the annexes discusses some issues we need to think about when we are producing HTML results. The second annex introduces the formatting semantics described by the formatting objects of XSL, complete with a simple example. Annex C has a number of reference summaries that are useful for navigating both these training materials as well as the W3C specifications hyperlinked from the PDF pages. The last annex presents a number of questions that you can consider asking when choosing which XSLT processor will suit your transformation requirements. As well, since the designers of XSLT have not included any documentation specific constructs in the language, I review a freely available documentation methodology. This process, developed at Crane and downloaded for free from our website, is used for producing detailed documentation of XSLT stylesheets. This documentation is complete with an alphabetized index to all named top-level global constructs found in all fragments of the import and include tree. We'll talk about some of the available mail lists and an email address to reach the editors of the specifications. A colophon describes how we produce these materials. And there are details regarding the PDF book we sell from which these materials are derived. If you follow the link shown, you will find excerpts of this material that can be downloaded and reviewed before purchasing a copy separately from the video package. There are site-wide and worldwide staff licenses available for these PDF books and all PDF purchases include perpetual access to all future editions at no charge. We are confident that practical transformation using XSLT and XPath will be one of the most useful XML-related training classes you have ever taken. Please contact us if you wish to hire us to deliver this as live instructor-led training.